This is William Ray here with Faisal Al Azam. Uh, why are you here tonight and uh, what's going on in Syria? Uh, we're here actually in solidarity with the Syrian revolution and Syria's uprising for uh, freedom and dignity. And as you can see, we're, uh, you have a Tunisian flag and uh, you have uh, people from Montreal and Quebecers and all over uh, from different backgrounds in Montreal in solidarity with the, with the Syrian people because um, the cause of the Syrian people, it's not a Syrian cause or an Arabic cause. It's really something of human conscience and universal values, freedom and dignity. So it's been 11 months right now. We've reached approximately 7,000 dead civilians, approximately 60,000 detainees. And just in Turkey, we have 10,000 refugees. So the situation is disastrous. Uh, why, why do you think it is that the West response to the uprising in Syria has been so different from the West response mm -hmm. to the uprising in Libya? Well, first of all, Libya is a country filled in oil, so in two weeks, uh, world leaders and Western powers had a very big heart for Libya. But unfortunately, we, we thank the international community for their condemnation of violence in Syria. But while they are talking, Assad is committing massacres. The Russian and Chinese veto that occurred on Saturday was a license to kill, and it's, it's been almost six days, and every day we are averaging 100 dead civilians in Hamas. The economic and oil factor is huge, and there are other aspects as well. Geopolitically, Syria is more complicated. It has a border with Israel, and I think for the West, the security of Israel and its stability is part of their foreign pol policy. So it's something very crucial. So that when they look at Syria, they have a look at Syria from, from this angle. And as well, you have uh, Hezbollah, you have th the danger of Iran intervening if there is any kind of interference in Syrian affairs from the West. So its comp situation is very complicated. And the sad thing is th the people that are paying the price are the people on the ground, sacrificing blood and soul for, uh, for their future and ours. And this is why we are here in solidarity. And uh, Without Western intervention, I mean, do you see a full-scale civil war erupting in the country? If the status quo remains as it is, we are heading into 1994 Rwanda. I so have no doubt about you, that. You, you would predict wide-scale killings? Right now, there is wide-scale killings. I mean, I'm watching a live stream of what's happening in Syria. Activists with their mobile devices, this is their weapons right now, to show the people what's going on. We are seeing rockets and missiles landing on Hamas hours and hours and hours. Do you have some fear that if the West intervenes, mm -hmm. what you're going to end up with is is something run by the West? Of because course. we've kind of seen that. I mean, the Egyptian, the, the Arab Spring, so far all it's brought is military dictatorship in Egypt. So my, my comment about that is for sure we are fighting for our independence and we don't want to be ruled by imperialistic countries and have to fight for our, our independence from them. This is for sure. We, we don't want to get into this scenario. So right now what we're having, something very important, we have actually defections from the army and they have formed something called the Free Syrian Army. So those are soldiers actually that are, uh, and we salute them, that are risking everything to protect these protesters and to protect civilians. And some cities actually right now in Syria uh, the militia thugs of the regime can't even enter those cities because they are protected from what we are calling the Free Syrian Army, which is composed of these defectors. So those, uh, this Free Syrian Army is playing a very important role right now, and we have a lot of faith in them. What the West can do in uh, coordination with the Arab League and other Islamic conference is actually to start creating safe havens in Syria, for example, on the Syrian-Turkish border. This is one example to actually protect activists, protect the population, and protect as well these army defectors. Why is it important? Because each, uh, from our discussion with people who have defected from the army or who are in Turkey, no one defects if he doesn't ensure that his family is safe in Turkey. Because if you defect, from, if you defect from the army, it's automatically you are sentencing yourself your and your family to death. To death. Yeah, so if we are able to provide them with this safe haven, with this humanitarian corridor, I assure you that the army is going to collapse. Any soldier that does not shoot or shows hesitate, hesitance in shooting, he is being executed on the spot. So we, we have a lot of faith in this, uh, in this Free Syrian Army. And as I told you, how the West or how Canada can support us is start politically, diplomatically by isolating the regime and starting as well to establish these humanitarian corridors or, or safe havens in Syria.
to protect activists, protect protesters, and also protect the army defectors that are making the difference right now on the ground. Well, thank you very much. This is William Ray for CUTV News on St. Catherine Street with a group of concerned Syrians.